Hey guys, welcome to another video and today I wanted to give you an update on the UNECE R79 regulations better known as the nerfing of autopilot in Europe. So we were interested in two major things. Uh, one is the lateral g-forces that would be improved from 0.3 g's to 0.4 g's. Um, so as you know, in my uh, test videos, I always take a specific S-curve, uh, which is relatively sharp, but it is doable to take that at 70 kilometers an hour, which is the legal speed limit at that point as well. If I let Autopilot do it with the current version, then it just drives into the opposing lane, and that is a very dangerous situation, of course. Whereas if we take autopilot from last year, before the regulations were implemented, then autopilot was perfectly capable of handling that S turn at 70 kilometers an hour. So the car is capable, it's just not allowed to do it by regulations. The second thing we were interested in was the auto lane change. So right now we have a five second rule that says as soon as you turn on the indicator, which is mandatory to start the lane change maneuver in, in Europe. You have five seconds before the car needs to cross the uh, lane marker with the front left wheel, if you're going left or the front right wheel, if we're going right. And then you have five more seconds to complete the maneuver. The stupid thing is that the car cannot start moving before one second as well and cannot start crossing that before three seconds so it needs to be between three and five seconds that's a very narrow window to actually make that uh, crossing into the new lane now uh, the new regulation or the new proposal suggested to have a 15 second window um, as of initiation of the blinker so you can indicate to other drivers hey i want to cut in in busier traffic a driver can leave a little bit of room and then you still have time to cut in there which is basically impossible in the current implementation so those were two minor changes but they would have a great usability effect on autopilot in itself and, and autopilot would be a lot better in a lot more cases right now the talks were or the workshop was happening at uh, Geneva on November sorry February um, 10 to 14 right we still don't have an official report but fortunately I do know a few people that are directly involved in these uh, conversations and um, yeah I got some Intel I don't get all the details there of course but I got some information there that unfortunately those two proposals have been postponed to the meeting of September so they were first proposed in September 2019 and now they are being postponed to September 2020. So that is a year just to get those two simple changes um, approved, hopefully. They might still be rejected as well in September. But um, yeah, that, that takes over a year to, uh, to actually implement that and to improve a few things on a regulatory level. So as I said before, the Tesla is perfectly capable of doing that. It's just regulations that prevent it from actually acting in such a way. Um, which in my opinion is just stupid, but yeah, uh, it's the, the regulatory bodies that uh, actually do that. Now, how come it has been postponed? Well, there was a lot of support for these um, proposals. However, Apparently the Netherlands and Scandinavia, they were opposing it. They were not agreeing to those proposals. Which is kind of funny because Scandinavia and, and mostly Norway then and the Netherlands, they are the biggest Tesla markets in Europe. And Norway even one of the biggest, I think they're number three in the world. And they are opposing things that Teslas are perfectly capable of handling. Um, that does strike me odd altogether. But it's the way it is and we unfortunately have to live with it. I was hoping to test it myself because I read on Reddit 
uh, that one guy was claiming that there were some improvements in 2020.8 and that they didn't get warnings or disables of, of autopilot anymore on a specific point where it used to do that. Unfortunately, I'm still stuck at 2020.4 and I've called the service center hoping to get the update uh, via them, but uh, they checked multiple times and 2020.4 is the latest release for my car. I believe the 2020.8 has been revoked because of uh, issues with Bluetooth and such. Uh, right now 2020.12 is rolling out, but I already wanted to share you this in case I don't get the uh, 2020.12 release in the next few days. So there you have it. Unfortunately not a good update I can give you, but nonetheless it is an update on where we are with the regulations here in Europe. And unfortunately autopilot is still being nerfed to the same level as it has been for the past year. Hopefully we can get some uh, new regulations towards FSD uh, in September then. At first the guy, uh, Mr. Guichard, who is the head of uh, all of this, these talks and these workshops, uh, he first said to me like, hey, uh, we're going to have some FSD regulations in the making first proposals in spring of 2020. If this is now shifted to September, I assume that those proposals will also shift at least to 2020 or to September 2020 or maybe even later. Um, so I don't think we'll get to see anything close to what people in the US currently have in, in the next year, maybe two years, uh, because it takes such a long time even to, to get these two small changes implemented and, and approved. They are aware of the petition uh, that has been signed. I already sent them the link to that petition as well. So they know that we are not happy with this. And uh, a lot of people have signed that petition. So thank you all for that. And uh, hopefully it will put a little bit more pressure on them uh, to get things moving again. And Avere is doing a really good job. They really document their cases. So there's, there's no room for interpretation. They say, okay, we want these changes based on these tests and these numbers that we have calculated, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so they really have a solid case to, uh, to propose. But unfortunately, as mentioned, uh, some parties are not happy with that still. And, and hopefully they, uh, they might be a little bit more lenient as more cars and as more automakers are capable of doing what Tesla is currently doing. Right, so as always, if you like the videos, please give them a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe using that button down there. And uh, make sure you click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. And for now, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye bye.